So what are you seeing changing from a sales leadership perspective over the years that you've been uh, involved with them? And uh, what's, what's needed now for a 21st century world? Lots of bravery, which mm-hmm. I think is a challenge, especially if people have worked long and hard to achieve those senior roles. Um, but by, by stepping up and being brave, you pave the way for those who, who report up through to you. It's probably the hardest thing for any salesperson to um, stop and reflect and say, you know, I've had this all worked out for the last 20 years and now I need to change because it feels like a failing um, on a personal level. So, and it's not a failing at all. It's just the world has changed and to actually embrace that is a very courageous thing to do. So I think uh, whatever mechanism an organisation has access to, to get people to understand themselves and to start exploring how they become, how they can become more brave and courageous, um, you know, the faster we're going to be able to, to take this beast forward. And it's hard because, you know, folk in the CEO uh, role or, or any of sort of the uh, C-suite people are focused on their own issues. They're also having to sort of manage costs and, you know, work through system implementation. So they're not front and centre So in many, many ways, it's going to take the sales team because the focus is on them to step up and be the leader for the organisation because that's where, you know, the money comes in. And and if that part of the organisation isn't embracing it, then you can hardly expect the rest of the organisation to to come into gear with that because they look to the sales team constantly for recalibration of their own um, teams and and ways of working and what systems they put in place to support it. So, you know, it's a pretty important um, position to be in right now. And so those who are brave and courageous will be leading the change. Which leads me to then the topic of customer centricity which is a term that's bandied about, but whether it's actually truly enacted remains to be seen. So what is it? What is customer centricity? And can it actually fundamentally change businesses for the better? Yeah, it's a good one. I mean, uh, customer service or customer centricity or customer experience, you know, it's been around forever and ever. And I think if people are honest, you know, we've, we've taken pretty much a transactional approach to serving customers and, you know, there's a magic formula and if we tick this box and they send in a survey, it's all great and we can all give ourselves a bit of a pat on the back. Um, It's interesting now because of the complexity of the environment in which we're all working in and the sorts of things that I've been exploring is this shift to heart-centred leadership. And it's a really difficult one because, you know, in many, many organisations, the sales function is is, generally led by men. And that's not to say that they're not heart-centred, but they've basically had the heart beaten out of them (laughs) um, over the years. And trying to get them in touch with their true inner self and and embrace their vulnerability and things like that is going to help them to be much more heart-centred in their leadership strategy. When salespeople, whether it's leaders or, or, um, you know, the the sales field team are out there and they are truly having engaging conversations where they're connecting with customers and there's a real meeting of the minds, That's where trust and the power is built. And that's sustainable selling practices. So, you know, sometimes it might not always be, you know, the deal for the day. But if you're you're wanting to pursue good business, business that's going to help your business um, be sustainable and here for the long term, that investment in looking at the way we have conversations with customers, the way we broker solutions, um, because it's got to be win-win and it's got to be heart-centred. There has to be an element of risk on both sides um, because both the customer and um, the organisation that's providing the product or service is also taking a leap of faith because that product or that service might look very different in six months' time. So to manage that navig- 
you know, that ambiguity, you really have to be able to step into that uncomfortable space and, and have a caring, engaging, heart-centred conversation about how you can do business together. Um, so that whole partnering piece is much more important and I think you'll see less and less of, you know, this vendor transactional piece. It might suit some industries, but where, where you want sort of long-term sustainable customer um, outcomes, you know, it's going to have to shift. But then this is going to, going to have to go across the um, whole business then, these yeah. heart-centred conversations, these ability to work together. Because to me, what you're talking about is this finding common ground. Yeah, because uh, we're never going to have perfection, but we can find common ground where we can work together with our clients, but also how we internally work with each other to deliver that promise that we're making to mm. our customers and to preserve that trust and mm. then therefore the relationship. Yeah. And, you know, if, if people feel uncomfortable using those words, heart centred or love or things like that, which I totally appreciate because sometimes it just doesn't feel like yeah. it has a place in the business. And we're sort of talking baby steps here from people who kind of have moved from, you know, a world of all of that stuff happens outside of work or it just doesn't happen at all. Um, and I like to call it care factor. So sometimes that's a little bit more palatable. So, you know, if you can talk candidly about what your care factor is about a customer engagement or a relationship internally or with your team member, um, I don't know, I've, I've, just played with that and I think it resonates and it lands pretty well with people because it doesn't feel too intimidating or confrontational but what it does show is that you're invested and if you're invested um, you're going to build that trust and you're actually going to get the outcomes that you're looking for but it's got to be authentic. Oh absolutely I, I liken it to yin and yang that you, you need that yang, which is that dynamic, go out, find opportunity. But the yin is that space where you can listen and understand and work with ambiguities and find that common ground and then, you know, harness those two things together. So I've been, you know, I've been writing about this for, for quite some time and many years ago I did write the yin and yang of selling and we mm -hmm. need both. So I agree with you, um, this heart-centred, human-centred um, empathetic but it doesn't mean that we're soft or that we just say yes to everything I mean in mm -hmm. fact we find if we're good at finding common ground we know what we can do together and what we can't do together and I think people really appreciate at least reasonable people really appreciate when mm -hmm. they know what's possible so uh, and how you can collaborate on opportunity mm. yeah and I'll probably add to that too is that the skill of having much more ca candid and open conversations mm -hmm. Um, which so often, unfortunately, for a variety of reasons or just office politics, just don't happen. So, you know, there's an avoidance culture or people sort of, you know, um, play around the edges. And it's, sometimes it's quite difficult to have a straightforward, uh, robust conversation, which isn't about attacking an individual or a person. It's about attacking a problem mm removing a blockage, um, you know, in a sales process or, or any other process for that matter. So those are the sorts of skills and capabilities, which probably, you know, to be honest, were not on the sales radar. I mean, it was more about in negotiating or influencing or things like that, where some of those elements come into play. But to, to have a real eyeball to eyeball, candid conversation with people about what you can and you can't do um, instead of playing games is, you know, that's, that's a tricky one to navigate. And I think we all have to constantly practice that to get better and better at it because every conversation is slightly different. Your stakeholder is different. Um, so it, this is where it comes back to coaching. It's like, how did that conversation go? Hmm, what could I have done better? Reflecting, um, role-playing it with your leader, figuring out different strategies that you can use. Um, to get better at it because, like you said, no one is perfect and if we become serial experimenters in this space, mm -hmm. we're going to get really good at it but we've got to be comfortable with the small failings and give ourselves a pat on the back for having a go instead of running away from it or, you know, uh, delegating it, dare I say, or, or just... Or ab abdicating it. it abdicating yes, it absolutely. <laughs> but you see to, to me what you're saying this is actually um, a life skill I mean you know we live by the philosophy everybody lives by selling something yes. so what we're talking about here is whether it's HR or any other role including sales 
Mm -hmm. Really, all of us need to become decent at this if we're going to work together in this complex world.